Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com, and today we'll just compare and contrast uh, CNC router production versus CNC laser production using the same project at hand. So we recently got a project to make custom whiteboards, which is, which is something we've done quite a bit of here in the shop. This one here is the version that I made with the CNC router that you see behind me, the ShopBot PRS Alpha. And this one here is the same design made with our laser, which is a Trotec Laser Speedy 400 Flex, which has a CO2 and a fiber laser source. Now, a little bit of a background before we get into this. Uh, how do I know all this stuff? About 10 years ago, I got a ShopBot desktop and I learned how to design and optimize things using a CNC router. Uh, I'd say about six years ago, um, I got into the laser industry and I learned how to optimize and design processes for industrial lasers. And then about, I'd say two months ago, one month, two months, um, I got this huge industrial CNC router behind me. So it's like going from CNC router to laser to CNC router. But all that knowledge accumulated is what I use when I deal with customers um, who want a project done. And it's up to me to find the most optimal system and design to do that project cost effectively and within their timelines. So this is a great example and I thought I'd make a video about this. So the first video we'll take a look at is the router behind me making this whiteboard in the shape of a shield. Now a couple of things I want you to know about CNC routers. Number one is that they use a bit. So you're limited to the diameter of your resolution. Uh, for instance, if there was an inside corner, you have a rounded inside corner and that's limited to the diameter of the bit you're using. So let's say I use a 1 8 bit, um, the diameter of the bit, will, will, it can't do a sharp inner corner, it would do a rounded inner corner to 1 8 inch.
what else did you notice in the video just now? If you looked at the video very closely, you'll see I used hold down screws. Basically, let me grab a screw here. So basically something like this here, right into the material to hold it down. The reason for that is because the router is a two-way feedback contact system. What I mean by that is it knows exactly what depth it's going into the material, but it's also pushing and pulling through the material. So as a result, if I didn't hold this thing down, either with a vacuum or screws or what have you, it would actually move around on the table and produce a really awful result. Now the only other thing I want you to notice close up here is the chip out. It might be a little bit hard to see, but you'll see the edges are a little bit rough. By contrast with the laser, which isn't a two-way feedback system, which means that the laser doesn't know how deep it's going. It's just a rough calculation by me, the operator, uh, as to how much power to use to get a certain amount of depth. You'll notice that everything's really, really nice and sharp. So now that you've seen how the laser works and the router works, which machine would be best for this project? Well, it really, really depends. Now for the laser, it produces a pretty nice result. Everything's perfect the way it should be. And it's basically exactly the same result. Now you notice this one is a little bit lighter in color. And that's because when the laser works, it's actually vaporizing the material. And sometimes with MDF that has a coating on it, what happens is it vaporizes that stuff. And although the whole surface is masked, I can't mask where the engraving is happening. So what happens is the little particles of MDF crud fly off and then they fly back down into the pores. Now this will eventually become just as dark as this over time because basically what fell into the pores will eventually fall out of the pores, uh, showing the dark MDF that is the backing of it. Now let's say I had um, just one of these to make. I would definitely use our CNC laser to do it because it's, it takes longer but it produces the perfect result for the one-off. Although it's a lot slower. If I had a hundred of these units to do, what I would do then is use definitely the CNC router over the laser. My laser is 140 watts so it's a very powerful industrial laser and still it's slow compared to the CNC router. Now you might say, well, you know, all those signs are gonna have this awful chip out, right? 
Not necessarily. Uh, when it comes to CNC routers, it depends on the speed you're going through the material and the bit that you're using. Now, if, if I have a one-off, I'm not going to spend a couple hundred dollars to get a specialized bit uh, to do that one project with that one material. But if I have a hundred or a thousand or a million units to make, then it's worthwhile getting a custom optimized bit for whiteboard material. And what the result would be, be a slightly rounded version of this here. Uh, but I'd probably achieve pretty close to the same edge quality. Now let's say we take it one step further. This material here is one eighth inch, which is roughly three millimeters. Let's say it was, I don't know, two inches thick. Um, right away, the laser is out of the game. And the reason for that is because the laser, the beam is not like this. The beam is actually like a cone. And this is where the stuff happens, where vaporizing and the cutting or the engraving uh, occurs. Now, if I have one inch thick or two inch thick material, I'm going to have to go over it many, many times to cut through it. So although the engraving might be, you know, the, you know, one eighth, or in this case here, I think it's one millimeter, one thirty second deep. It's not deep at all. So for the laser, that would be no problem. But because we have both machines, I can actually optimize both processes. So I hope this video helps to give you an idea of what we go through here in the shop when it comes to custom production. There is no perfect machine for a perfect process. There's just the best machine for that application at that time. Now our lasers are always evolving and as are CNC routers. And there are other CNC machines on the marketplace as well and that's like CNC plasma, uh, CNC water jet and a bunch of other cool CNC stuff that will probably find the, day, the light of day eventually. So if you have a custom production job, you don't need to know all of this stuff, but I will, you know, sometimes we have projects that are on the borderline and then I need to explain to the customer, well, if we use this machine, here would be the result. And if we use this machine, here is the result. And, you know, sometimes we have to use that one machine for the results so the customers decide, okay, do I want this one or do I want that one? Another great example would be uh, wood. Uh, let's say we were making a custom plaque. Let me grab a sample here. Let's say I was making something like this here. Now this is all made with the laser. You can tell by the burned edges, which is a dead giveaway that a laser was used for the production. Could I replicate this design using our CNC router? Absolutely. Now there would be a couple of caveats and the biggest one would be the very fine lines that you see here. Yes, I can do this with the CNC router and it would definitely be faster than the laser but again, it comes down to thickness, volume, and what the design parameters are. Now, let's say the customer just wanted one of these here. Um, I don't know, I'd probably, use, I'd probably still use the laser to do it. And the reason is you have very small holes here, which would mean I have to use a very small bit. And like the insides of these things here would be rounded. And this thing here just would not be possible. Now, if I had a thousand of these things, we're again back to the whiteboard. So then it's like, well, I got a thousand of these things. There are a couple of design compromises that I would have to do to do them with the CNC router. But the CNC router would be definitely more cost effective to do a project like this in, in large quantities over our industrial laser. Although our laser, as you can see, can totally do this job. Now, there is one drawback to using the CNC router, and that is the contrast. You notice here that there's a lot of contrast going all the way around, and that's not paint. That's, that's actually the laser burning into the material and producing charcoal. The router uses a spinning bit. It doesn't produce that. So I would have to do a secondary process where I'd probably mask this, paint it, and then remove the mask. And then I gotta decide, well, is it worthwhile doing everything in one process with the laser or two process with the router. So I gain the speed with the router, but I have to then paint it afterwards. So it kind of takes away the time. So again, whenever we do custom projects for customers, sometimes we got to do prototyping on various machines that we have here in the shop. And then we find the best machine for that job. So if you have anything custom, uh, contact me at cncri.com and we'll make it for you.